Hello students, welcome to today's geography class. In today's class, we shall be learning about water bodies, that is chapter 3. Before we proceed further into the chapters, let us see some of the important terminologies used in this chapter. Firstly, hydrosphere. Now what do you understand by hydrosphere or what does hydrosphere means? Like we all know, our earth planet is covered by 71% with water. Now the areas or the part of the earth's surface that is covered with water is called or known as hydrosphere. Sea level. Sea level is the average or the uniform level of water bodies, especially the surface of the water bodies. Now this sea level is used for measuring the height of mountains, plateaus, hills and other geographical landforms to measure their height. Now, apart from measuring their height, it is also used for measuring the depth of ocean or lakes. Water cycle. What is water cycle? The continuous interchange of water between ocean, atmosphere and land or the hydrosphere, atmosphere and lithosphere is called water cycle. This is also called as your hydrological cycle which means that the non-stop change in the form of water between your ocean waters, your atmosphere and land is called your hydrological cycle. In this process, the water changes into different forms in the form of solid, in the form of liquid and in the form of gas. Due to heat, the water of the oceans get evaporated and get converted into gas. When it rises up in the atmospheres and cools down, it forms cloud. These clouds again falls back on the earth's surface in the form of rain or snow. This process keeps on continuing without any interruptions. And this process is rather known as water cycle or your hydrological cycle. Now let us learn about what are water bodies. The significant amount of water found on the planet surface in the form of oceans, seas, rivers and canals and also other geographical features which are not stagnant in one place but rather moves from one place to another is known as your water bodies. By significant amount of water here we means a very large amount of water that is present on our earth surface. Those water which covers our earth surface like we already said ocean, seas and rivers, canals and other geographical features is known as your water bodies. As we learn about water bodies, we came to know that it is present on the earth's surface in different form. One such form it is oceans. Now let us learn about oceans. The large amount of water bodies that are present on our earth's surface are called oceans. Now, the major oceans that are present on our Earth's surface are Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean, Arctic Ocean, and your Southern Ocean. Among the major oceans, let us first learn about the Pacific Ocean. For this, please turn to your book and find the figure number 3.3. If you see the figure number 3.3, you will see that Pacific Ocean is bounded or surrounded by Australia in Asia in the western side and 
North America and South America in the eastern side. The Pacific Ocean is one of the largest ocean and the deepest ocean found on our planet Earth. This Pacific Ocean was named by a Portuguese explorer named Ferdinand Magellan. The depth of the Pacific Ocean is 4,200 meters below the sea level and covers one third of the globe, which means it covers an area larger than combined area of all the continent. The Pacific Ocean is divided into two parts, that is North Pacific and South Pacific. There are some interesting things about the Pacific Ocean, that is the deepest point on the Earth is found in the Pacific Ocean, that is the Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench. The three-fourth of the Earth active volcanoes or the maximum volcanoes that are present on the Earth is also found in the Pacific Ocean. Now let us learn about the second largest ocean in the world that is your Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean is surrounded by North and South America in the West and in the eastern side it is surrounded by Europe and Africa. The Atlantic Ocean, if you see into, into the figure 3.4, you will find that it resembles the letter S. The Atlantic Ocean is also very important because the ship all over the world use this ocean for commercial purpose and that is why the Atlantic Ocean is also known as your highway of the world or the great commercial highway of the world. Now these Atlantic Oceans, lots of water are being drained into it by some very important rivers such as River Rhine, River Mississippi, River Niger and etc. Indian Ocean the Indian Ocean is not as big as your Pacific Ocean or your Atlantic Ocean. It is comparatively smaller in size and the depth is only up to 4000 meters below the sea level. The interesting thing about the Indian Ocean is that it is the only ocean in the world that is named after a country that is our country India. Now this Indian Ocean have two bays, Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea. It has got lots of small islands like Maldives, Cocos and so on. Just like the deepest point on the Pacific Ocean, deepest point on the Indian Ocean is your Sudha Deep that is found in the Java Trench. Many rivers drain water into these oceans and some of the important rivers are your Ganga, Indus and Zambezi. Next major ocean is your Arctic Ocean. Please find the image in figure number 3.6 in your book. It is the smallest ocean among all the oceans that is present on the earth. It is located around the North Pole and it remains frozen almost throughout the year. This ocean is connected with Pacific Ocean by Bering Strait. The Arctic Ocean is surrounded by continents all around it like continent of Europe, Asia and North America. Southern Ocean, please find the figure number 3.8 in your book. Now this Southern Ocean, it surrounds around the Antarctica and lies in the Southern Hemisphere. The Southern Ocean is also known as your Antarctic Ocean. Just like the Arctic Ocean, this ocean also remains frozen almost throughout the year and hence it is not navigable for the ships. The ships cannot go there all the time. But Southern Ocean is not small compared to Arctic Ocean, hence it is bigger than your Arctic Ocean. Yes, we have learned about the major oceans, the characteristics of ma major oceans. Now let us learn the importance of ocean. 
Firstly, it acts as the main source of water to the mankind that is us living on the planet Earth. How? By contributing water vapor to the atmosphere, which later turns into rain and falls down back on the Earth's surface. Secondly, it controls the climate. The places which are located near the ocean, it controls the temperature, rain, humidity. You will find in summers that the areas which are far away from the oceans are relatively much hotter than the areas that are located near the ocean. Thirdly, the mankind highly depend on the ocean for protein or for food source because it acts as a food storage, especially of marine food, that is your fish. It is not only storehouse of food, but it is also a storehouse of minerals and oils, which are very much essential in our modern life. Lots of chemicals and minerals are extracted. Many countries extract those minerals and oils, which are later used for the country's development. Lastly, oceans also provide the cheapest mode of transportation, means taking people from one place to another is the cheapest in terms of water transport in through oceans. Not only that, they helps in transporting your heavy and bulky products all over the world. As we have learned in this class about ocean, about different terminologies, about the importance of oceans, let us do, do some homework that is assigned to you. Firstly, what do you understand by the term water bodies? Second, define hydrosphere sea level. Thirdly, explain briefly about water cycle and draw a rough diagram representing the water cycle. What is ocean and name the major oceans. Mention four importance of oceans and write the three characteristics of each major oceans. I hope my class is helpful to you and you will be able to answer the questions that are given to you. And lastly, Please stay safe, be at home, wash your hands regularly and stay safe.